All right, guys, before we get into the video, do me a huge favor, hit the like and subscribe to the channel down below. That's a free way to support me. And most of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So uh, that will be a free way to support me. Help me to keep spreading the word. Click the little bell icon down below and that'll notify you every time I drop a new video so you don't miss out on anything. And share this with somebody you loved. Uh, someone that you do love. Hopefully you haven't loved them. You currently love that person. That would be a, uh, a better person to share my videos with, probably. But uh, that helps out a lot. It uh, helps the channel to grow, helps me to keep spreading this good word. So if you like what you see, that's an easy way to keep me doing it. But enough of that. Let's get into this video. I'm pretty excited about it. This is Gunshot Wounds. I know a thing or two about Gunshot Wounds. And it's one of my... Uh, favorite injuries, um, not to receive, to treat, but there's a, there's a lot of things that we can pull out of this. And I think there are some, uh, some good ideas, uh, that we can kind of pick up on here and, uh, kind of think about if we're ever in a situation where we're taking care of somebody with a gunshot wound, how are we going to take care of it? Um, here are some things to kind of think about. All right, guys, I'm going to shut my mouth at least for a little while. And, uh, let's take a look at this video. Uh, this is inside of an ER, um, and I will leave a link to the where I found this video in the description down below. So if you want to go and see the whole video without my voice blabbing over it, uh, that's how you'll be able to do that. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, um, All right, so what do we got, what do we got coming in? Um, we haven't even begun to work her up yet. Um, Bilateral thighs, all right. Initially hypothensive and the field responded to fluids. Okay. Did you hear that? He said initially hypotensive, but responded to fluids. So what does that mean? So when you have a trauma patient that's lost a lot of blood, they might have low blood pressure. Hypo means low. Hyper means high. You're hyperactive. You're very active. If you're hypoactive, you're laying on the couch. Turn it on that leg there. So. Any medical value just says like a heart murmur. Heart murmur. Had that all your life? Hey, do you know what caliber gun that uh, got your legs? What is it? 380? Okay. okay. And was it close range or, or, or not? All your clothes are coming off. Was it, some, was it somebody's gun in the car? Or was this from outside the car? He was standing at the door. Standing at the door? Did you know who it was? He's there. All right. So from that, we can kind of hear a couple of different things. Um, first, we want to notice that the casualty is answering questions normally. He's responding quickly and appropriately. He's not slurring his words. So that is a good sign. If he was hypotensive in the field from loss of blood, then you might start to see slurred speech. And when you ask him a question, he either doesn't respond or doesn't respond appropriately. Maybe he's more aggressive, or maybe he is um, happy. You know, most people aren't happy after they've been shot, and that might be a good clue that something's not going well here. So that's something to kind of take into consideration here. And now the other thing that we can hear is that the doctor is asking about the proximity of the shooter. How far away was he? Uh, was he close or was he far away? And the reason why that's important is because it comes down to uh, velocities. The closer you are to the muzzle of that weapon, the higher the velocity of the bullet that's coming out of it. And that velocity is what kills. And, and we'll, maybe we'll talk about this a little bit later in the video if I remember it. But uh, the velocity of the bullet is very important for how much damage it does. A low velocity caliber would be something like nine millimeter, 45, a pistol caliber, right? 38, 357. Uh, those bullets are going to be moving pretty slowly. Uh, and now your high velocity calibers are going to be your rifle rounds, 556, 30 out 6, 762 by 39. Uh, those are AK bullets, uh, 762 by 54 are any rifle round that you can think of is probably going to be a faster moving, high velocity round. So velocity plays a big role in the wound that you're going to have. And there's gonna be a significant difference in the damage done from a rifle round compared to that of a pistol round. And 380 is a pretty tame caliber. Um, it's much more difficult to kill somebody with a 380. It's definitely possible, don't get me wrong. I'm sure lots of people have been killed by a 380, but if I remember correctly, the ballistics and the wound channels that are created by 380s don't tend to be very lethal uh, compared to something like 556. 
5.56 is the caliber that's generally fired from uh, AR platform rifles, which is what the military carries. And the wound channels from a high velocity round are significantly larger, especially in cavitation. So you have two different types of cavitations that happens when a bullet is passing through human tissue. You've got uh, the permanent wound channel. That's the actual destruction caused by the bullet traveling through the body itself. But then you also have a temporary cavity. This temporary cavity flexes out and then after the shock wave from the bullet passing through the body continues, it collapses back in on itself. But this initial flexing of the tissue can cause extra damage to surrounding organs and tissue. So more tissue is affected than just the hole as the bullet travels through. If this had been a close range rifle shot, it probably would have blown his leg apart both of his legs. Uh, I did a video uh, a couple of months ago uh, about a shooting in Kenosha where a gentleman was uh, shot in his right bicep close up with a rifle round 5.56 five, or 2.23. And uh, the damage that, that that bullet caused was very substantial. And um, that's a good example of what happens at a close range rifle shot. And then you come back and take a look at this 380. It passed through both legs and it's a nice, neat little hole in both, in both sides. So there's a substantial difference between high velocity and low velocity calibers. That was a lot of information. I hope that you understand that. If you don't, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know what about that is confusing to you. And if possible, I will try to respond to you so that uh, we can kind of clear up some of these issues and questions that you might have. All right, let's get on with this video. That was a lot of talking. Yeah, right. get a blood pressure well, before we, got, uh, got one, can we one get a blood here. pressure before we take that list? Sure. Right there. Yeah. Okay. How, how close was he when he shot you? I'm trying to get that ring Is it off. real? Uh, maybe. Four feet. Yeah, four feet. feet. The projectile is right on this side. Oh, you can feel the bullet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it hurts. So did it hit? I'll pause that a second so you, that you can see femur in the middle, entrance, and then where the bullet is. And we can see that it mushroomed. Uh, it entered in there. Maybe it was a hollow point, and that's a, it's a pretty, pretty obvious mushroom of that bullet. So pretty interesting. Hit your um, left side first. It went through this leg and into this leg. My left and my right. Okay. I see a hole right there. So was it one one bullet? Yeah. Okay. A thirty-eight. So that was one bullet. It went through once one leg and then into the other leg, and then it got trapped right there. And you probably heard they could feel the bullet underneath the skin on that side. I felt something like that before. It's pretty. It's pretty odd. Um, about four feet from the outside of the car. Um, he tried to jump. You want to give yeah. yourself the pain? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's the pressure? 126 yeah, good blood pressure. All right. We've been looking at it for quite a while now. I think it's time to bring it up. The belt tourniquet. Now, I did a video a couple of weeks ago, a couple months ago, talking about why belts make for crappy tourniquets. A lot of people think that that's a good idea um, and that if as long as you're wearing a belt, You've got a source of a tourniquet. And um, I talk about in that video why belts don't make for very good tourniquets. Now, there are other things that you can do to help control bleeding. And I talk about what some of the things that you can do in that video. But this is a good reason why you need to have your own trauma kit. You never know what's going to happen. You never know when you might need a trauma kit to control bleeding. And I bet this guy would have been a lot happier if he had had a tourniquet and even happier if he'd had two tourniquets. This is a good reason why you need multiple tourniquets. You might get injured in multiple limbs. So um, try to have good quality cat tourniquet, uh, softy wide, something like that, that's gonna do a better job of controlling bleeding instead of the belt. Yeah, we don't just do that, man. Go, go ahead and take that, pull that tourniquet off there, the belt. All right. All right, so, so they pulled it off and you can see that that wound is steadily oozing blood, but it's not pumping out. Right. And sure. Yeah. That, uh, that steady ooze could eventually kill your casualty. They would just bleed out more slowly over a longer period of time. But right now we can see that it's not actively pumping out. So that's a good sign. You can see that his pants has collected quite a bit of blood and it might have been bleeding a lot more 
earlier and then they apply the tourniquet and I was able to control the bleeding a little bit. Um, sometimes what will happen is that the arteries will just clot off on their own. And that's good because the rest of your limb is getting blood supply and you're not closing off all the blood supply to that whole leg. And then they release the tourniquet, the belt, and now they're taking a look at the bleeding and whether or not it's oozing really badly. Do we have one? Yeah. That room is a wreck. Okay. Hold your foot real still for me. You got a pulse on that? We can get us a Doppler if you want. Sure. Grab that Doppler. Yeah. Mr. Vaughn, have you got a technical shot? Mr. They're checking for a pulse, trying to see if he's got blood supply to the rest of that leg down there. What are you, what are you giving for pain? 100 mics of fentanyl. When's okay. the last time you had something to eat or drink? Uh, I had something to drink this morning. This guy over here, it's kind of hard to see. They're getting the Doppler ready. That Doppler is uh, what's going to help them to find that. Uh, that pulse that they're looking for. They want to make sure that he's got good blood flow to that leg. So they're, that's what they're going to use to to listen for that. And and we'll uh, we'll see that a little closer here in a moment. That's something to eat about 30 minutes before that. Do you take any medicine every day? No. <laughs> no health problems normally? I'm sorry. There's the Doppler. You hear it that they're using this this the head of this they've, they've got a little bit of a gel on there and then they're holding that up you kind of have to know anatomy you got to know where the uh the arteries are coming through at but they are listening for where that where that artery is at so what this does is it just makes the noise of the heartbeat louder through a, through some speakers so that they can confirm that he does have blood flow to the leg but the bleeding is controlled, and that's a good sign. X-rays here. No, I did. Not without your permission. And that's the X-ray machine, so that they can take a look at where that bullet's at, uh, if there's any fractures. After this? Yeah, you were walking. Okay. Walking around. Okay. All right. Nothing so, up here so, so he just he just got done asking the casualty, the patient. Um, you were walking around after that. Chance of having a bone broken is pretty pretty slim, but you don't have it again. You don't have a problem with me just doing a little video on that. So he's asking, you know, did, were you walking around? And he said, yes, I was. So he said, okay, the probability of having a broken bone is pretty low. So which is pretty true in my opinion. You know, I'm not going to disagree with the doctor now, but in my experience, I've actually worked on people who uh, who have said, you know. Um, they have leg pain. And I said, hey, can you put weight on it? And they said, well, let me try. So they stood up and, you know, and they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, I could put weight on it. You know, and I was like, oh, okay. You know, he's putting weight on it. It's probably not broken. He's walking around. You know, he walked in here by himself and uh, turns out it was definitely broken. He had a broken leg and he was putting a lot of weight on it. And I felt kind of like an idiot because I assumed that if he was able to put weight on it, he could take the pain that it's probably not broken, just a bad sprain or something like that. But that's a good reason why you need to take into account the population that you're taking care of. Is this somebody who's got a big ego, a lot of bravado, a lot of masculinity, a high pain tolerance? You know, that's a lot of the guys that I took care of <laughs> back in the day. So, you know, you know, you got to pay attention to that. You got to think through like, okay, he says that this isn't that big of a deal, but you know, I kind of know, I kind of understand the population that I'm dealing with here. And I'm going to kind of take that information with a grain of salt and kind of keep that in the back of my mind. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Thanks for hanging out and taking a look at this video about gunshot wounds. Uh, there's a ton of stuff we could talk about in this video. So if uh, you see something that I missed, um, something that you want to talk about, drop a comment down below. That's the easiest way. I try to respond to every single comment that I can. So if you have something to say about the video, 
That's the easiest way to do that. Thanks for checking out this video and sticking it around to the end. I really appreciate it. Um, and if you're still here and you want a uh, good quality trauma kit and you want to support what I do, head over to the mountainmanmedical.com website, check out our Yellowstone and Wind River trauma kits. Get yourself a couple of cat tourniquets, get them staged up, get them ready when you need it or a family member needs it. You're going to be ready. Be ready for whatever the mountain throws at you. I'll catch you guys in the next one.